Well, hello everyone and welcome to my third review of my top 10 favourite stories of each Doctor and today as you can probably see from the title of the first DVD here today I'm going to be doing my top 10 favourite stories of Tom Baker and believe me this was one of the hardest of all the Doctors to decide my top 10 from because Tom had so many brilliant absolutely amazing stories during his time and I found it really hard to, diff to put it down to 10 but I think I finally just managed it and there might be a few surprises which people might think uh, why does he even like these but as with my other reviews I'll explain very briefly on why these are all in my top 10 and I'll go from my top 10 and starting from uh, coming in number 10 is Warrior's Gate. Now this story I think is a really brilliant experiment. This is Doctor Who being really imaginative and different and there's nothing like this story in the rest of the whole series of Who. It is totally unique. And it's absolutely brilliant. I think the Farrells are an, a really interesting race of aliens in this story. And I think the whole story to do with the mirrors and time and space contracting in this story as the final story of the Space Trilogy is absolutely brilliantly thought out and brilliantly portrayed. And it also has some great, great characters in this character of Rorvik in particular is a brilliant and classed absolutely dinlo of a villain who's absolutely brilliant to watch and the whole story is just excellent and it's also <laughs> got Kenneth Cope appearing in this story which also adds to it and having a great carry on star doing a great role in this story and that's why this story comes in at number 10 then at number 9 we have State of Decay. I love this story. Terence Dix has always been my second favourite Doctor Who writer after Robert Holmes. He's so adept at writing such marvellous stories for Doctor Who. And this I consider to be one of his best. And the way he handles the vampires in this story is brilliant. And yeah, it's absolutely brilliant and just proves you don't need to have a bloody neck bite in to have a great vampire story. And this is a classy vampire story. The deaths of the vampire scenes at the end is one of the best vampire death scenes I've ever seen. How it was shot and achieved with the limited budget is just incredible and it's absolutely brilliant. And all the characters in this are really well portrayed as well and come over really well. And you really feel for local villagers in it as they're trying to overcome the three who rule. And Terence has done a corker of a story in this one. And that's why this story comes in at number nine. Now, then we come to a season 17 totally underrated story, actually, if you ask me, in The Creature from the Pit. And I love this story. Uh, but the main bit, main reason why I love this story is not because of the totally funny and maybe a bit silly looking monster and the creature. But the show only had a modest uh, uh, amount of money put into it in these days, even in Tom's time. And it's still brilliant. And the reason why I love this story so much is because Myra Francis is an absolutely brilliant, and to me, one of the best villainesses ever on the show ever. She's just so nasty and simmering, and I love her performance to bits. And it just totally, totally wins me over. And also, to add to that, we also have Jeffrey Belden on Doctor Who as well. Another brilliant actor who goes so well with Tom Baker in this story. It's like two giants meeting. And this story is not half as bad as it's made out to be by a lot of people. And it is still thoroughly enjoyable and thoroughly absolutely brilliant. And that's why it comes in at number eight. And at number seven... We have the first story Douglas Adams wrote for the series in The Pirate Planet. Absolutely brilliant story. I love the portrayal of the captain by Bruce Burgess. One of the best one-off characters ever. And Queen Zanxia, absolutely brilliant villainess yet again. Tom Baker had quite a good few villainesses. And this is one of the best. Zanxia is really cold-hearted. 
and this whole plot and script of this story I think is absolutely brilliant it's bristling with them brilliant ideas that despite limited budget in this story still come across on the screen really really powerful and strongly and you even feel for the captain at the end when he tries to break away from Zanks who are ruling him by having him completely in a fraud by his, her, his control box and it even has a brilliant fight between K-9 and the Polythes Avatron and it also has Mary Tam who's definitely my best Romana and she's absolutely brilliant in this already totally found a seat in the character and it's absolutely brilliant against Tom Baker's fourth Doctor and that's why this story comes in at number seven at number six we then have another two brilliant story and a classic if ever there was one in horror of Pang Rock. A yet another Terence Dick story, yet another one of the best isolated stories ever. This story is one of the most claustrophobic Doctor Who stories ever. And the set design and how they achieved it when they just had that budget cut in half from this series onwards and just had Graham Williams take over from as producer. To me, this is an incredibly good story so tight and claustrophobic and all the characters are really really brilliant in this story and they all make it come alive brilliantly and the root in this so brilliantly realized and i don't know what the hell they made it out of it just looks so core and glutinous and brilliant it's absolutely incredible and also i love louise jameson's performance as leela in this story it's one of the best stories and terence actually writes her character well unlike some other characters who may would have put her having a scream when leela isn't a screamer and this story is really 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 powerful and really good and some great performances and that's why it comes in at number six Then at number five, we have an instant classic with me, and this has a distinction with me of being the first ever Dot 2 story I watched. My dad bought this home for me from a video library shop when I was five years old, got me hooked on Doctor Who, and it's Revenge of the Cybermen. Absolutely brilliant performances from so many people in this. Ronald Lee Hunt and uh, uh, for a start is absolutely amazing as Commander Stevenson. Jeremy Wilkin is superb as Kelman. And despite what I've heard some people say about Christopher Robbie as an Australian cyber leader, to me he's the best cyber leader who was ever on Doctor Who. And also then we have David Collins who is absolutely formidable as as Vorus on the story. He is such a brilliant villain. But actually not really an all out out and out villain as he's trying to achieve a good end but doing it in not perhaps the most brilliant way you could imagine. But this story is great. I always will love this as it was the first one I ever saw and that's why it comes in at number five. And at number four we have another Robert Holmes absolute classic of a story. And it's the Deadly Assassin. It has the master so brilliantly portrayed by Peter Pratt. And I was actually a bit sad that this was the only time he ever played the master on Doctor Who. Because he was so good in this story. So creepy. And that is most psychotic as a character, the master in this story. And it's absolutely brilliant story. And one of the freakiest scenes on whoever is when the Doctor rubs away at that, sh at that polished metal in the sand. And it is with that freaky clown that scene freaks me out every time i see it even to this day and there's loads of other scenes that are absolutely timeless and classic in this brilliant story and that's why for me it comes in at number four then at number three we have a brilliant six-part epic written by robert bank stewart this has elizabeth sladen for a start of being her how probably as strong as she was with Tom Baker when she stands up to a villain and says you're never complete unless you've got a gun in your hand which I think is brilliant and it also has John Chalice playing a brilliant actually a psychopath who actually for once gets some decent character development in this as his Scorby is brilliant as he goes through the ring and breaks down and finally realises the Doctor isn't the idiot he first takes him to be 
and also it boasts Tony Beckley, who is absolutely phenomenal as Harrison Chase, as a plant lover extraordinaire who is totally mental and bonkers in this story. And that is why this story has always been a favourite. And Tom is also at the height of his powers in this story. Absolutely brilliant in this Doctor, needing it from the word go. Comes in really strong, stays strong. And even in this story, has rather a lot of action. He seems a bit more angry as a Doctor in this story as well. And it really adds to the tension and really makes this one really, really watchable. And that's why it comes in at number three. And then at number two, we have Robert Bank Stewart's second story, Terror of Zygons. As the last story to feature the Brigadier and the unit for a long while, this story was a really brilliant ending. Until we saw the Brig again in Morden Undead, this was an absolutely superb story. It almost had the feel of a Hammer Horror film to me, actually. It felt really atmospheric really brilliant and wherever they recorded it it really came over well as being like Scotland in the Highlands and the Zygons are one of the best realised monsters ever on Dot 2 and the people acting as their human forms absolutely done them creepily and eerily well and also uh, Ian Marta as Harry in this and his Zygon duplicate is absolutely superb and it makes this story absolutely brilliant and this, ever since I first watched it, really frightened me, this story. Excellent story, brilliantly directed by Douglas Canfield. And that's why it comes in at number two. But for me, my favourite ever Tom Baker story, and this may surprise a lot of reviewers, but to me, this story for Tom just can't be beaten. And it is The Sunmakers. The reason I love this so story so much is because it has some of the best villains ever in it. The Gavra Hayes and the Collector, absolutely perfect villains. And and Henry Wolf as the Collector, absolutely superb villain. I love his voice and he is so slimy and so nasty and vicious. And how he works with Tom working against him. Especially when he calls him blood-sucking leech. Those are my favourite scenes of Tom's Doctor ever. This story is such a wonderful and playful script. Apparently Robert Holmes wrote this after being annoyed at his, his tax bill. And he wrote this as a sort of satire about the whole taxing and all that rubbish that we have to go through as everyday peoples in this British country. Which is what subsequently won the most tax places in the whole planet and so the story has a deeper resonance and it's absolutely brilliant absolutely faultless and timeless and absolutely brilliant story and that is why this story has always been and always will be my favorite tom baker tv story it's absolutely amazing and henry wolf makes his story and also louise jameson is really really brilliant as leela in this i love the character but then again the whole of tom baker era has been so fantastic and that's my whole favorite tom baker stories and that is why these are my top 10 even though there are a few others that would have been if I'd have been able to, would have been in this list, but I just couldn't really whittle it down to 10 properly. But these 10 I would consider my out and out favourites, even though there's others that are absolutely amazing, like Towns Away and Triangle for a start. But these are the ones I watch the most and love the most. And I thought I'd just put, put these 10 because I don't want to do my top favourite or this story. Although I would if I could because Tom had so many strong stories. But these are just my 10 favourites. And I hope you enjoyed my review for these. And I'll see you soon with yet another Doctor's top 10 stories from me. And thank you very much.